All right, welcome to the Prescribing Truth Podcast. y'all to the prescribing truth podcast i'm your host jamal bandy and i am the one who tries his best to distribute the truth that the doctor prescribes to the church and the world today today i want to talk about an interesting story that i saw online um the site of which i saw it from was sportspectrum.com um this was actually posted on the 24th of january and i'm just now getting around to wanting to uh share it in um and uh, <laughs> share it and talk about it. So what's interesting was uh, it was the a doctor who was um, I think he was an, a a doctor for those um, Olympian Olympian gymnasts um, women, and he was accused of sexual abuse um, of, of minors, uh, and a lot of them came forth. Um, and you can imagine the pain, the hurt, and um, the uh, turmoil that these young ladies had to go through, um, through this ordeal. But what caught my attention is this particular article speaks about the woman who came forward first and being the one who came first, she was the one who, uh, brought forth all of this kind of steamroll this, um, and to bring justice to this, um, to this gentleman. And, uh, I mean, I would, I would try to, to pronounce her last name, which I would try, but I think I would uh, mess it up. But her name was Rachel Den Hollander. And I probably pronounced her name wrong, but um, man, uh, the guy, the guy named the offender, his name was Larry Nasser, and man, I'm amazed at how uh, she handled this hearing. Um, uh, man, it was beautiful. Like she shared the gospel. I mean, you can imagine um, the pain that she have gone through. Um, all this time holding this in and finally coming forward. Uh, but man, the bravery that she had uh, to share the gospel in the courtroom that not only for Larry's benefit, but for those who were in attendance or those who were listening. I mean, in that video of her sharing the gospel, I mean, it went viral. I mean, er I mean, people heard it everywhere. And it, what blows my mind is that out of all the other families who were there who are ready to throw stones at Larry and though he may deserve it, man, the grace that she showed him still hoping for justice, still looking for justice to be served. But man, the grace that she gave this gentleman by giving him the gospel, hoping that while he spends the rest of his life in prison, that he will somehow find peace in our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is the hope that we should have for everyone, even our enemies, man. I mean, that's, that's the love of the gospel. Christ loved his enemies. That's what it says about us. He says that he loved his enemies. He gave his life for enemies, those who hated him. Yet he gave his life for them. And man, and we should be able to mimic that love. We should be striving to mimic that love, to uh, look to Jesus, and gain strength and understanding that we may learn to forgive as he forgives us. Man, I mean, it was just beautiful, man. Um, Rachel Den Hollander, man. Like, so, so just reading... Um, just the the first paragraph of the uh, article from SportsSpectrum.com said former gymnast Rachel Den Hollander shared a half hour testimony on Wednesday to the court and her abuser during the sentencing of former USA gymnast gymnastics doctor Larry Nasser, who molested her 16 years ago at his Michigan State University clinic. Who we? And says what she said directly to the man who abused her and countless other girls in a manipulative and horrific way is an incredible testimony to the grace, justice and truth found in the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want to play for you real quick. Um, now, this video is on YouTube, uh, but I just want to play with you a snippet of what she um, said to Larry. And I want you to take a listen, man, and 
man, I, I just hope you're encouraged uh, by her by her courage and her boldness. The cost, emotional and physical, to see this through has been greater than many will ever know. And Larry, I don't need to tell you what the cost of your abuse has been to me because you got to read my journals, every word of them, because those had to go into evidence to make this happen. But I want you to understand why I made this choice, knowing full well what it was going to cost to get here and with very little hope of ever succeeding. I did it because it was right. No matter the cost, it was right. And the farthest I can run from what you have become is to daily choose what is right instead of what I want. You have become a man ruled by selfish and perverted desires. A man defined by his daily choices over and over again to feed that selfishness and perversion. You chose to pursue your wickedness no matter what it cost others. And the opposite of what you have done is for me to choose to love sacrificially no matter what it costs me. In our early hearings, you brought your Bible into the courtroom and you have spoken of praying for forgiveness. And so it is on that basis that I appeal to you. If you have read the Bible you carry, you know that the definition of sacrificial love portrayed is of God himself loving so sacrificially that he gave up everything to pay a penalty for the sin he did not commit. By his grace, I too choose to love this way. You spoke of praying for forgiveness, but Larry, if you have read the Bible you carry, you know forgiveness does not come from doing good things, as if good deeds can erase what you have done. It comes from repentance, which requires facing and acknowledging the truth about what you have done in all of its utter depravity and horror, without mitigation, without excuse, without acting as if good deeds can erase what you have seen in this courtroom today. The Bible you carry says it is better for a millstone to be thrown around your neck and you thrown into a lake than for you to make even one child stumble. And you have damaged hundreds. The Bible you speak carries a final judgment where all of God's wrath and its eternal terror is poured out on men like you. Should you ever reach the point of truly facing what you have done, the guilt will be crushing. And that is what makes the gospel of Christ so sweet. Because it extends grace and hope and mercy where none should be found. And it will be there for you. I pray you experience the soul-crushing weight of guilt so that you may someday experience true repentance and true forgiveness from God, which you need far more than forgiveness from me, though I extend that to you as well. Uh that's just a snippet. I, man. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, that's convicting to me. And I'm not sitting there. I'm, I'm not Larry, but man, that's convicting because that is the conviction that should come across everyone who's faced with the reality of their overwhelming sin against a holy and righteous God. Man, I hope you can find that video. I may try to find a video and put the link in the description so you two can watch that snippet because it was actually 30 minutes long, uh, literally 30 minutes long. And that snippet was only about uh, two minutes of the five minutes that was left on the um, on the video itself. And so um, I hope that's encouraging to you. Man, this is beautiful. I'm praying for Rachel. I'm praying for all the young ladies who were involved in this incident. And I'm even praying for Larry that the Lord would crush him with the weight of his guilt of sin and would point him to the goodness and the graciousness of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Um, I hope this has been encouraging to you. Uh, please be bold to stand for Christ. And if you're an unbeliever, I call you to please repent. Turn from your sins and put your trust in the only Lord. Jesus Christ. Um, so that's it, y'all. I hope you have a blessed day. Um, I want to play this uh, just to close out. Just want to give this little plug for the uh, Patreon, for those who are willing to, um, to give to this ministry and to help support us, um, help the podcast grow and um, and the videos on YouTube and everything. I thank you for those who support me with prayers. Um, it's really appreciated. And those who just been encouraging me with kind words and everything. 
Um, but if this, if you've been helped by anything that we do here or that I do here, um, ask that you please would uh, consider donating. But here's the little plug. And um, after that, we'll be closing out. Support Prescribed Truth on Patreon. You can take part in the live tipping of the show, offer topic suggestions, help us get resources for our local communities, and so much more. Every little bit helps. For more information, click the link in the description. All right. So with that being said, y'all, I hope you have a great um, day. Um, Please look to Christ in all things. And remember, all truth is God's truth. And in a world full of errors, the only thing the doctor prescribes is truth.